First of all, um, the way to determine the deformations in beams is a little bit complicated. We need to use integration. But this integration is not used in this classroom a lot because it's very time consuming and it's very difficult even for a simple case like this. We basically talk about superposition method. It's more practical, it's easier to use, and it's practical for solving more complicated cases. So we focus on beams deflection using superposition method. The idea of superposition method is simply splitting the beams into simpler parts and There are three columns in each table. For instance, for this beam, which is the beam subjected to a load at its mid-span, we do have slope, which is the magnitude of slope of this beam at two points, at the left and at the right, as shown in the figure. Also, we do have maximum deflection, or Vmax, or delta max, which is the maximum deflection, which in this case occurs at the mid-span. In addition to that, we do have another elastic curve. This elastic curve is basically the function of deformation in terms of x. x is location of the point at which you want to determine deformation. So this is the general equation. Depending on what we are looking for, we may use the data that we have in the first column, second column, or the third column. The last data, the last column, is more general. So it can be used for determining the maximum deflection or the maximum slope. One question here. I do know how much is the deformation of the beam in terms of x, as a function of x, but I don't know how much the slope of beam in terms of x. Is there any way that we can get that data? So the question is, we do know how much is deformation in terms of x, but is there any way that we can determine slope of beam in terms of x. We don't have that value, we don't have that data in this table. What is the relationship between slope and deformation? Slope is derivative of deformation, right? So if I derive this equation with respect to x, I would get slope in terms of x. So if you need that, you can determine that from this. I didn't add extra t column because that would be just redundant here. <coughs> okay. Now, let's talk about one simple case and see how can we determine dimension in that beam. I'm just going to review the basic concepts of that. Assume that we have a beam like this, which is it's subjected to a distributed load and a concentrated load. There is no case in that table that has both of these two loadings. Look at this table. But we do have the distributed load and a concentrated load separately. So in that case, I can split this beam into two parts. One is subjected to the distributed load, another one is subjected to a concentrated load. And then, if I determine deformation in beam number one, call it delta one, and deformation in beam number two, call it delta two, I can determine how much is the deformation in the original beam. Let's focus on beam number one. If I go to table, what case is equivalent to that? The fourth case from top. So what, which column should I use? We have theta max, delta max, and elastic curve. In this case, we are just looking for how much is deformation at the very right end. We know that the deformation at the very right end is the maximum deformation. Okay? So I'm going to go and use this equation, WL to the fourth over 8 EI. So deformation in that beam would be this value. Now, let's talk about the second case the case where the load is acting at the very right end. This is case number one, and again, I'm looking for the maximum deflection, which occurs at the very right end of this beam, and that is PL cubed over 3EI. If I plug the values of that here, I have determined deformation of these two simplified beams. Now, how much is the total deformation in the original beam? That would be simply sum of these two deformations, right? So that would give me the total deformation. OK, so I just wanted to review the basic concepts of superposition method in determining deformations. Now let's talk about a problem which is easy, but there is just one trick important for that. Let's see what we have here. 
The simply supported beam shown in the figure consists of a section with the, mod with the moment of inertia equal to 274 million millimeter to the fourth and the modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascal. Other parameters like the magnitude of the forces and the length of the beam at each part are provided. The problem says, determine the beam deflection at point D. <coughs> okay? Is there any case in the table that has two loadings for simply supported beams? No. But we do have a case that has just one load. So I'm going to get back to this and simplify that by splitting that into two parts. The first beam is the beam subjected to load at D. The other one is the beam subjected to load at B. Okay? Okay. 